So let's do some problems where we involve momentum. Uh, so let's try problem 21 from your OpenStax physics textbook, uh, which asks us, when serving a tennis ball, a player hits the ball when its velocity is zero at the highest point of a vertical toss. So I throw the ball up in the air and then I hit it. The racket exerts a force of 500 newtons on the ball for five milliseconds, giving a final velocity of 45 meters per second. Using these data, find the mass of the ball. So I know I have a collision with this ball. I'm applying a force. Uh, and like every physics problem, we just start writing down everything that we know. So we know right away uh, we have an initial velocity of zero. We're told that we hit the, toss the ball up and, and we hit it when its velocity is zero. So V initial is going to be zero. We're next told the racket exerts a force of 540 newtons. So the force that we're exerting is 540 newtons on the ball. And we exert that for a change in time that's equal to 5.00 milliseconds. And it's good practice uh, to convert this into SI units right away. So that's going to be 5 times 10 to the negative 3 seconds. And then we're told that we have a final velocity of 45 meters per second that we give this ball. V final equals 45 meters per second. And now I want to know, what can I do with all of this? How can I use all these equations, all these numbers? So let's take all of our numbers, move them off to the side, and let's start writing down some equations. Well, I know what force is in terms of uh, velocities and momenta. I know that force is equal to a change in P, a change in momentum, divided by a change in time. But I know that the change in P is also equal to uh, the impulse. It's the mass, whatever is changing velocity. So it's mass times your change in velocity, which would be V final minus V initial. This is the definition of uh, impulse, of change in P. So then I can take this change in P and I can substitute it in for, into my force equation. So I know that force is equal to mass times a final velocity minus an initial velocity, all divided by some change in time. And now what I can do with this is I can shuffle around this equation, do some algebra uh, to get mass by itself. So I'm asked to find the mass of this ball. So what I really want to do is get this mass all alone. So let's do that. I multiply both sides by change in t. That gets rid of my change in t on the right-hand side. And I now have f times change in t on the left-hand side is equal to mass times v final minus v initial. Now I can divide both sides by v final minus v initial. They cancel out on the right-hand side, and I'm left with just mass is equal to force times change in time divided by v final minus v initial. And I can look, and all of these numbers are things that I'm given, things that I know. So my mass is equal to the force. The force which we were given at the very beginning is equal to 540 newtons. So I could plug in force, 540, times the change in time. The change in time I was given at the beginning of the problem is 5 times 10 to the negative 3 seconds. And that's divided by the final velocity, which we were given was 45 meters per second, minus the initial velocity, which was 0. So we get to plug in all these numbers, and we'll get a final mass of 0 0.06 kilograms. So that's how we can use the definition of force uh, in terms of momentum and the definition of impulse, change in P equals mass times a change in velocity, to find the mass of this tennis ball. So let's try another type of momentum problem where we're going to conserve momentum. And this in particular is going to be an inelastic collision where only momentum is conserved. So during an ice show, we have a 60 kilogram skater that leaps into the air and is caught by an initially stationary 75 kilogram skater. We want to know what is their final velocity, assuming neg negligible friction, and that the 60 kilogram skater's original horizontal velocity is 4 meters per second. And we also want to know how much kinetic energy is lost. So right away, that tells us that this is an inelastic collision. Since we know we lose kinetic energy, it's not conserved. We're going to uh, not have the same amount of kinetic energy before and after this collision. So we can write down everything that we know in this momentum collision problem. We need to write down initial situation and the final situation. 
everything you know that happens initially and everything that you know that happens in the final case. And you want to do this with any kind of momentum collision problem that you experience. So we know we have a mass one of one of these ice skaters. This ice skater is 60 kilograms. We also know that this 60 kilogram skater is traveling with an initial velocity of four meters per second. So I'm calling this mass one and they're traveling at four meters per second. Then I have the other skater that's gonna catch this first skater, uh, call them mass two, they are 75 kilograms. And we know that their initial velocity is equal to zero because we're told that they are stationary. Then in the final situation, I'm told, we have this skater uh, catches the other one. So I'm going to combine their masses. We're going to have a final mass. That's the combination of both of these, mass 1 plus mass 2. That's going to be 60 plus 75. Because if the skater catches the other skater, they, as far as physics is concerned, they're just one skater, just one big mass final that's going to be equal to 60 plus 75, which is going to be 135 kilograms. And then we also want to find what this final velocity is. So based on these numbers that I'm given, I can actually solve this entire problem. I know that momentum is conserved. So I know P initial, whatever the momentum is over here on the left, has to be equal to P final, whatever momentum I have over here on the right. So let's figure that out. Let's solve this problem. So we'll take all of our constants We'll kind of move them up to the upper corner where they're out of our way, and we can write down some equations. I know that P initial is equal to P final. And P initial is made up of two things. I have mass 1 times V initial 1 plus mass 2 times the initial velocity of mass 2. So that's my initial momentum. And that has to be equal to my final momentum, which is my final mass after my stigators have combined times my final velocity. And I can take this whole equation and I can solve it for final velocity. So I can divide both sides by mf, and I will find that my equation uh, for final velocity is mass 1 times v initial 1 plus mass 2 times v initial 2 divided by mass final to give me my final velocity. And all I have to do at this point is plug and chug. I know all these numbers. So V final is equal to mass 1, which we found was 60 kilograms. We were told this, times V initial 1, which is 4, plus mass 2, which was 75 kilograms, times the initial velocity of uh, mass 2, which was 0, because that was a stationary skater. So that's going to just cancel out. Divided by mass final, which was 135, the combination of both these skaters' uh, masses. So V final, when we plug this all into your calculator, we'll get 1.78 meters per second. So that's how we do part A. Now in part B, we're asked about how much kinetic energy is lost. So let's make room to do part B. So we can take all of this, uh, and we'll kind of shrink this down nice and small, shrink this down nice and small, and let's solve for our kinetic energies. So we want to know how much kinetic energy is lost. So to do that, I have to know how much initial kinetic energy I have. K initial is going to be equal to 1 half of my mass 1 times my V1 initial squared, it's our equation for kinetic energy, plus 1 half of mass 2 times my initial velocity of mass 2 squared. Now we should remember, we might remember that mass two actually isn't moving, it's stationary, so it's, it can't have kinetic energy. It can't have energy of motion. So our kinetic energy initially is gonna be one half of my initial mass, uh, mass one, of 60 kilograms, times my V1 initial, which was four meters per second, and we need to square that. So you plug all those numbers into your calculator and you find 480 joules. We can do the same process to find the final kinetic energy. The final kinetic energy is equal to one half the final mass, the combination of these two skaters, times their final velocity squared. So we plug and chug your numbers in. One half mass final, mass final was 135, the combination of both skaters' masses, times their final velocity, which we just saw for 
was 1.78. And we square that number. And we get a final kinetic energy that's equal to 214. So to get the loss in kinetic energy, I need to subtract these two. And the nice thing about this is this shows us right away this is not an elastic collision. Since the initial kinetic energy is not the same as the final kinetic energy, we know that the collision is inelastic. To find how inelastic, to find the change in kinetic energy, you have to take the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy, whatever energy you start with. So that change in K is going to be equal to 214 joules for the final situation minus 480 joules for the initial situation, the initial kinetic energy. So our change in K is going to be equal to negative 266 joules. This tells us we lost, that negative right there tells us that we lost 266 joules of energy uh, in this um, uh, problem.